My favorite part of working for Koval is really helping people understand and appreciate their own palate and likes and dislikes. So often, um, especially for women, I find that, you know, it can be very intimidating, the world of whiskey or high-end spirits. You feel like you need to have all of this knowledge in order to appreciate something when in reality, you know, all you need is someone, you know, offering you a glass and trying a few different things and really just helping you let your guard down and say, I like this or I don't like this, regardless of how fancy it is or how much you know about it. Um, really, that is something that I miss a lot about in-person gatherings, and we've been able to replicate a little bit virtually, but um, it's such a cool thing to see light bulbs come up um, on people's heads when they realize that, oh, I don't hate gin. I just had a bad experience with it once and thought that I was done forever, or, um, you know, I thought that I didn't know anything about whiskey, but it turns out that I love bourbon. So... Um, yeah, that's definitely my favorite part of working at Koval. I am so grateful to be a part of the Koval family. And one of the many reasons is because I have such a deep respect for my boss. I think she is such a great example of what it means to be an intellectual, independent, educated woman and a mom. And she puts that first and I see it and I respect it and I never feel like I can't come to her and tell her I'm having a really bad day because I may be overwhelmed by my kids and she knows that and I love that. And that's for sure the number one reason why I'm so grateful to be a part of this company. And uh, happy International Women's Day, everyone. Go crush it. We got this. You guys are amazing. My favorite part of working for Koval also used to be my least favorite part about working for Koval, which I think is great. I think anytime there is a switch like that for someone, I think it shows positive growth, uh, either in the industry that they're in or in their role, maybe both. And for me, my role at Koval is very public facing. So lead a lot of tours, teach a lot of whiskey workshops and cocktail classes. Like, if you have a bottle of booze, we will build an educational experience around it. Um, and something that I used to really dread, but now look forward to, is when I would receive a man quiz. And this is when a man would quiz me on whiskey in a way that was noticeably different from how he was interacting with my male colleagues. This is not to be confused with someone who is genuinely curious. You know, inquisitive people drive our experiences. Um, you know a man quiz because it is when you have to work twice as hard to prove that you are knowledgeable about something simply because you are a woman. And I think this is very relatable across a lot of different industries something that every woman I know has, has dealt with many times throughout whatever career she might be in. Um, and for me, it used to give me like low key anxiety because I felt like this type of man was looking for a gotcha moment. And I've wanted to really do the situation justice. And then over the years, I sort of started to realize that this type of man may or may not change his mind whether I answer every single question perfectly. And it can't be my responsibility or my job to prove myself to a man. Uh, what my job is, is to provide a knowledgeable experience. And in doing that for a group of people, Ideally, that will start to normalize a woman being in a role of authority in an industry that, sadly for many people, is perceived to be a boys club. So 
I now really look forward to a man quiz. Um, but I have to say that they are sort of dying down. Don't really get many man quizzes anymore. And I think that that's yet another really positive sign of the industry growing. And I think it's also a testament to Koval being a place that from the top down has incredible female leadership. So constantly it's just normalizing and sort of asserting this idea that women are going to be really knowledgeable about this. So get used to it. For the past five years, I have had the privilege to grow in the liquor industry alongside two of the most influential members in the craft spirits world. I was given the opportunity to start working at Koval as a taster or sampler, and then moved to covering account visits, distributor relations, and management. During my employment at Koval, I was the first woman, aside from our founder, Sonnet, to become pregnant. This news internally was celebrated. However, the news and physical changes that occurred to my body over my pregnancy were not as well received by others in the industry. I was ridiculed at tastings while sampling products, blatantly made fun of, degraded. I heard things such as, your husband lets you do this? I hope you're not sampling on the job. Even after I gave birth, I received comments such as, wow, I didn't recognize you. You look so different without that belly. My breast milk, was even referred to as chalchata, and I was expected to play along. In working for Koval, I have been... In working for Koval, I have been empowered to bring my concerns of discrimination to our management and team. I can place a quick call to Sonnet, and a numerous suggestions from her are brought to the table. She has offered to write emails to presidents of distribution houses informing them of their employees' behavior. My coworker offered to change wording to our employee policy to have available to me to use at events that read, discrimination of any kind, including pregnancy, will not be tolerated. I was encouraged to take my nursing child with me everywhere I went. And when I wanted to, sometimes I did, and sometimes it was quite messy. <laughs> but I was able to work up until the day I gave birth and was elated to get back to the job after I had my child. And now, even with my wild toddler, I am encouraged to find balance in being a mother, a wife, and a businesswoman, because if we choose to, we can do it all. Hi, my name is Sonnet Birnikerhart, and I am the president and owner of Koval Distillery in Chicago. My journey has been a journey of really wanting to honor family, wanting to be with family, wanting to be in a city that I love and make something that we could be really proud of. And, you know, it has been a journey that completely changed the course of my life and, you know, that of my families. You know, Robert and I had other careers I was a tenured professor. He worked at the Austrian embassy as the deputy press secretary. And in starting Koval, we decided instead of buying a home, uh, we would take that down payment and we would buy a still and move to Chicago and work together and create this business. And it has made all the difference. Uh, we were able to start the first distillery in Chicago since the mid 1800s and use all of the knowledge that Robert learned growing up doing chores with his grandfather making distilled spirits because he comes from three generations of distillers and we were able to you know really make something in the city we love that has on every single bottle distilled in Chicago very proudly displayed and we've grown from just ourselves and one child in a pack and play to now two almost teenagers. And, you know, our products are available, not just here, but all over the world in about 55 export markets. And we've done that. It's been a lot of hard work, <laughs> but it's been truly a joy. And I think the reason why is because all of this really was a labor of love. It was... It was not just wanting to create a brand. It was about wanting to do things that 
really spoke to our hearts. And that's true in the name of the company itself. I mean, the name Koval comes from a nickname given to my great grandfather when he left Austria at the turn of the century to come and start a business in Chicago. His family thought that that was such a radical thing to do that they gave him the nickname Koval, which in many Eastern European languages means schmied or blacksmith, but in Yiddish it means somebody who, like a blacksmith, forges ahead or does something new or out of the ordinary. And it also happened to be you know, Robert's grandfather's family name, it was, which is Schmied, which is basically Koval in German, so Schmied. And so we were able to have the name of the company honor both sides of the family. In having the company, we've been able to work with family. I mean, my sister, through her company, Dando Projects, she's designed our labels, has done our branding, and, and that has been an incredible uh, experience to be able to work with my sister and work with my husband and work with my family in so many ways. I mean, it's been really beautiful. But also, you know, it's we think of all the people that helped us get to this moment. I mean, I think of my great grandmother who always wanted a factory and yet she spent her days probably 20 hours a day sewing um, just as much as she could so that she could put her family through college and it's it's wonderful to finally you know achieve a different generation's dreams and have them be your own as well which is a really unique experience and I feel that, you know, also with Koval, I, as a woman and as a mother, I've been able to do so many things that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. I mean, I've been able, because I write the own rules. I mean, they're my rules, I, it's my business. So in the sense, you know, I was able to nurse on demand. I was able to be with my children the whole time. And, you know, we also, we, we homeschool, so the, the kids were always there. And sometimes that created circumstances that, in the business world might have been frowned upon, but I've actually found that they've been um, helpful in a way that I would have never imagined. So for example, if I was speaking to a distributor on the phone and one of my, my kids needed a juice box or something, um, it would open up a conversation that was very personal that would have never been possible. So all of a sudden this is true. You say, oh, you're with your kids. Oh, I have kids. What, how old are your kids? And all of a sudden it creates this very personal rapport that is very helpful in business. So it's it's been a really interesting journey as a woman and a mother, you know, running a business. And uh, I also feel that because the business that we entered had so many antiquated laws um, at very early on, you know, I set out to change them and, you know, going to Springfield and, you know, pleading for my bill and actually ultimately getting it passed with the help of a, you know, woman senator. Um, it, it was really amazing to recognize how wonderful an experience that was and how in so many places in the world that would have never been possible not even today and so you know i don't take any of this for granted and i know that a lot of people like to say well the liquor industry is male dominated and i will say you know there are two things that i say to that you know the first one is is that any hardships you know that that might be alluded to in that kind of a comment i think apply to any industry. And, you know, I was in academia before and I was a tenured professor. And, you know, even when I reached the highest I could reach in that field where I was a named chair of a department at one of Europe's best universities, I still experienced all sorts of little comments and things that, you know, were inappropriate that I think a woman will experience in, in any industry really. So I don't think that, you know, those types of issues are specific to liquor. And in fact, I like to say, 
and the other side of this is that women have always been a part of the liquor industry. In fact, the first still ever made was made by a woman in ancient Egypt. So women have always been a part of this. They've always brewed, they've always distilled. And in fact, many times in history, it was considered women's work. So the fact that it's considered male dominated today is really just the cultural perspective of our time, but doesn't necessarily reflect the reality, especially since in being in this business, I have come across a lot of women who are very powerful in this industry, whether as, you know, makers or as, uh, you know, distributors, brokers, advertisers, you know, any, all spec, the whole spectrum in this industry. There are some amazing women and that's always, uh, you know, a joy to see. Um, but I know that, that, uh, women have always been there. Um, and so I feel like right now we're sort of reclaiming in a way our place in this industry. Um, in a way that that uh, is certainly making its mark. And aside from that, I feel that, you know, what has also been wonderful about this journey is that, you know, we've been able to do things and bring our values into it. You know, we've been able to make it really important to give back to the community. We've uh, made it, you know, important to make products with real integrity. Um, we, you know, all of these things have been, you know, elemental for us and have, you know, made it also a joy. And not just that, but the people who are involved in this with us have been incredible. And there's, there's a lot to be said for, you know, the team and, you know, the, you know, we have amazing women at Koval, and we have amazing men at Koval. We have amazing people at Koval. Um, so that that has been a part of the journey that has made it also incredibly special, and you know, makes us want to do it every day. So, cheers and and cheers again. <laughs>